So here we are doing the current affairs for 16. Now the first topic and the most important topic is Russia says some troops pulling back from areas near Ukraine. Now I am sure you have heard of the troop build up near the border of Ukraine. That has happened in the recent past. Now the western countries have been accusing Russia of uh, threatening Ukraine or uh, Russia of moving into Ukraine and taking over territories. Uh, there has been a troop build up of more than 1 lakh people on the border of uh, Ukraine and Russia. Now, Helio Swarm and Muse, again, it's a dynamic concept. This could be important. Please do read it. Then, Pacific Islands Forum, all right, it's a dynamic topic. Anti lynching bills passed by four states, one ocean summit, Supreme Court to hear legal tussle over services. This is a very important topic. It has been there in the news for a very long time. Yeah, so most of the topics are actually dynamic, but they are not, you know, say very conceptual. They won't be asked from mains perspective. They'll mostly be asked from prelims perspective. This is the only mains related topic. Russia says some troops are pulling back from areas near Ukraine. Russia said on Tuesday some of its military units were returning to their bases after exercises near Ukraine, following days of warnings that Moscow might invade its neighbor at any time. Now, why are these warnings there? These warnings are there because in 2014, Russia occupied Crimea. Crimea is a very strategically important area. It is majorly Russian speaking people. It is strategically important because it uh, commands the Sea of Azov. Now, there was a troop buildup of an estimated 1,30,000 Russian troops to the north, east, and south of Ukraine earlier. Russia maintains that the troop buildup was a part of its war exercises and not that it wants to conquer it. Now, Russian Defense Ministry spokesperson said that while large scale drills across the country continued, some units of the southern and the western military districts adjacent to Ukraine had completed their exercises and they were returning back. So, this is the justification that has been given by the Russian Defense Ministry. Now, first of all, we have to understand what is the issue between Russia and Ukraine. Why are these things happening? Now, tensions, I am sure you know that before 1991, Ukraine was a part of the erstwhile USSR. Along with Ukraine, there were other countries also. The five Central Asian Republics, uh, Turkmenistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan. They were all a part of the USSR. Latvia, Estonia, Belarus, Lithuania. These were all a part of the USSR. After the USSR split, uh, Ukraine became an independent country. Now, tensions between Ukraine and Russia, both former Soviet states, escalated in the late 2013 over a trademark political and trade deal with the European Union. So, the U Ukraine has been trying to move closer to the European Union. They have been making several trade deals with the European Union. They want to join the European Union. However, in the year 2014, the pro-Russian then president, Viktor Yanukovych, suspended the talks. Now, when uh, the pro-Russian president, the pro-Russian president suspended the talks regarding political and trade deals with the EU, there were protests. Huge uprisings in Kyiv, which is the capital of Ukraine. Now, in March 2014, Russia also annexed Crimea, an autonomous peninsula in southern Ukraine, with strong Russian loyalties. Now, so all these issues, you know, it is clearly showing the gulf that exists between Ukraine and Russia. Also, Pro-Russian separatists in Ukraine's Donetsk and Luhansk regions declared their independence from Kyiv, prompting months of heavy fighting. These are regions which are in the eastern part of Ukraine. You have Ukraine and in the, oh here you have Russia. In the eastern part of Ukraine. You have these regions. 
you also have one more region known as donbass uh, along with that you have donetsk and luhansk so these are the regions which are being actively supported by russia so that they can break away from ukraine so russia has been interfering in the internal politics of ukraine Despite Kyiv and Moscow signing a peace deal in Minsk in 2015, brokered by France and Germany, there have been repeated ceasefire violations. Regarding this, Russia and Ukraine signed a peace deal, but despite that, there have been repeated violations, and there is heavy infighting that occurs in this region. Now, current crisis and reasons for the troop buildup. according to moscow it sees that it sees that the growing support for ukraine from nato in terms of weaponry training and personnel as a threat to its own security now ukraine was also wants to join the nato however nato works on the principle of collective defense which means all for one and one for all if at all ukraine joins into nato then american missiles will be placed in ukraine and this presents a security threat to moscow russia and that is not liked by it it is also accused of ukraine of boosting its own troop numbers in preparation for an attempt to retake the donbas region the donbas region is currently under the control of russian separatists so russia believes that ukraine has been preparing and it has been allying with nato so that it can retake back this donbas region russian president Putin has also called for legal agreements that would rule out any further NATO expansion eastwards towards Russia's borders, including Georgia and Ukraine, saying that the West has not lived up to its previous verbal assurances. Okay, once the Soviet Union had actually dissolved in 1991, the then uh, U.S. President George Bush Sr. he had given written uh, he had given verbal assurances saying that the NATO will not expand eastwards. however since then nato has been expanding eastwards okay and some of the re- they have actually now lithuania latvia estonia all these are a part of nato however the region which is closest to moscow is ukraine if uh, these re- if this particular country also joins into nato then it will be a direct impingement on russia security another dip- uh, demand is that nato must not hold drills in eastern europe ukraine and georgia without prior approval from russia now this is a problem however the west what is the west saying the us and nato officials have bluntly stated that russia's proposals are unrealistic why will uh, the west or the nato agree to what the russia is demanding they insist that ukraine and every other country has a right to determine its own foreign policy russia cannot act as a as a big brother who is dominating and steering ukraine's foreign policy rather it has to be an independent policy they also dismiss the idea of russia wielding veto power or who gets to become a member of the nato and pointed out that nato would not take de- would not take decisions affecting eastern europe without involving the country's concerned okay now what is the nato we have discussed this earlier now it was an intergovernmental military alliance it was established by the washington treaty in the year 1949 now the headquarters is at brussels in belgium now since its founding the admission of the new member states has increased the alliance from 12 countries initially to about 30 countries now the latest member was north macedonia which is near greece helios form and muse dynamic concept nothing much to explain everything is written in the content itself however i'll read the important points NASA has selected two science missions the multi slit solar explorer and the helioswarm so in mcqs just say for example you don't remember any of these things you don't remember what this concept is about you can definitely read that it is about sun if you read helioswarm please know that you break down that word it says helio and swarm helio means sun so if you know the etymology of the word you can actually guess the answer so it has to be some mission related to the sun so 
the concept of this this particular experiment is that it will help our understanding of the dynamics of the sun the sun earth connection and the constantly changing space environment now muse mission the muse mission will help scientists understand the forces driving the heating of the sun's corona corona is the just outer layer of the sun it is extremely hot it is the hottest part of the sun and the eruptions in the outermost region that are at the foundation of space weather the mission will offer deeper insight into the physics of the solar atmosphere by using a powerful instrument known as multi slit spectrometer to observe the sun's extreme ultraviolet radiation and obtain the highest resolution images ever captured of the solar transition region and the corona now what is the helioswarm the helioswarm is a helio swarm you are swarming something swarm means a group of entities helio swarm mission is a constellation of swarm of nine spacecrafts that will capture first multi scale in space measurements of fluctuations in the magnetic field and motions of the solar wind known as solar wind turbulence so the goal of helio swarm is to measure what the magnetic field fluctuations the sun's outermost atmospheric layer the heliosphere encompasses an enormous region of the solar system solar winds spread through the heliosphere and their interactions with the planetary magnetospheres and disruptions such as coronal mass ejections affect their turbulence see whenever there are eruptions on the surface of the sun solar winds get affected now these solar winds when they come in interaction with the magnetosphere of various planets you know it affects this particular magnetosphere and these solar winds are also responsible for affecting the satellites that revolve around various planets like earth we have several observation satellites so the solar wind is capable of disrupting these satellites as well and hence it becomes important for us to keep learning about the solar winds about the heliosphere and about the corona because that's where solar winds get generated from pacific islands forum very static portion i mean it uh you just have to keep re- you just have to read it once remember it from prelims perspective what are the pacific islands the pacific islands are those groups of islands which are there in the pacific ocean like tuvalu tonga you can read about micronesia melanesia etc polynesia and all of them so all those are form a part of pacific islands now mm-hmm. Pacific Islands Islands Forum was established in 1971 to provide a setting for the heads of government to discuss about the common concerns which are there in the Pacific region. It comprises of 18 members. No need to remember everyone. The most important thing that you need to remember regarding the Pacific Islands Forum is that the Bikke Taba Declaration is a response to regional political instability and which would put forward a set of principles and actions for members to take to promote. open democratic and clean government and also the other declaration that you need to remember is the bo declaration of the pacific islands forum which reaffirmed that climate change remains the single greatest threat to the livelihood security and well-being of the people of the pacific now next anti lynching bills passed by four states recently there were several bills uh which were passed uh, regarding lynching activities lynching is nothing but the mob acting in a vigilante manner taking law and order into its own hands the bills were passed against lynching in the past 4 years by four states west bengal rajasthan manipur and jharkhand these have not been implemented because the union government says that lynching is not an offense under the indian penal code 
and hence how can you pass bills in order to it is uh, how uh, how can you pass bills uh, how can you pass acts in order to criminalize lynching it is for the union to modify the indian penal code and add lynching as, a, as an offense currently the union suggests that you know any acts of mob lynching can be prosecuted under murder sections under the indian penal code the union home ministry informed the parliament in 2019 that there was no separate definition for lynching under the ipc and that such incidents can be dealt under sections 300 and 302 of the ipc which pertain to murder the bills passed by these states have been reserved by the union government they have not been implemented hence okay now what is mob lynching as we discussed any acts of violence whether spontaneous or planned by a mob on the ground of religion race caste sex place of birth anything by taking law and order into their own hands okay it is known as mob lynching the supreme court had asked the parliament to make lynching as a separate offense in 2018 the supreme court has also given several guidelines on mob lynching okay what are the supreme court guidelines we shall read only the most important i have given uh, very few important guidelines over here only about 6 to 7 points however the most important one would be this mob lynching it shall be treated as a separate offense and the trial courts must ordinarily award maximum sentence upon conviction of the accused person to set a stern example so this is what the supreme court has suggested that it should be treated as a separate offense and you need to give maximum sentence of say life imprisonment in order to set a stern example state governments will have to designate a senior police officer in charge of mob violence and lynching he is the one who has to take care of prevention of these incidents from happening state governments need to identify district subdivisions where instances of lynching have been reported and it is needed to prevent lynchings from happening over there frequently again also the center and the state shall broadcast on tv and radio about the serious consequences of mob lynching however despite the measures taken by the state police if we come to know that mob lynching still has taken place even after making them aware even after police taking uh, measures to prevent mob lynching then in that particular case the police station shall immediately lodge an fir first in, uh, first information report instead of uh, you know waiting for time and then for investigation and all of that you immediately file an fir take uh, take up investigation file the charge sheet and ensure that the person is prosecuted okay next okay if the police officer in the district administration fails to take up a case of mob lynching then it shall be taken up as an act of deliberate negligence and even the police officer will be prosecuted in this case this is what the supreme court has given in its guidelines next one notion summit again very static concept uh the one notion summit was recently organized by france uh the concept of the summit is to ensure that there is a uh, sustainable usage of oceanic resources now the entire conference was organized in cooperation with united nations and the world bank prime minister modi had also given a speech during the summit the goal of the one ocean summit is to raise collective level of ambition of the international community on maritime issues and take tangible action towards preserving and supporting healthy and sustainable ocean ecosystems this is the idea of the one ocean summit now united nations has designated that the decade between 2021 and 2030 as a decade of ocean science for sustainable development why is the united nations united nations actually declares the various decades uh for various initiatives this is to create awareness regarding these initiatives and draw more people into preserving uh the earth okay the most important issue supreme court to hear legal tussles 
over services. So I'm sure uh, you must have read in the news that the Delhi government and the center have been fighting over several issues. Uh, one is regarding the staying of bills by the lieutenant governor. The other thing is the services. So there exist several points of debate between the Delhi government and the center. Now, the Chief Justice of India, he scheduled for March 3rd a prolonged legal tussle between the center and the Delhi government on which of them actually takes care of the services part uh, in Delhi. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, we have to understand that in the case of union territories, we have the parent uh, article of 239. However, in the case of the NCT region, we have a specific article known as Article 239AA. While New Delhi being a union territory, Article 239 empowers the Lieutenant Governor to act independently of his Council of Ministers. However, the state government of Delhi held that Article 239AA of the Constitution bestows special status to Delhi of having its own legislative, legislatively elected government. So, because they have varying interpretations of uh, the status of Delhi, it creates a tussle around the administrative powers of the Lieutenant Governor and the state government of NCT of Delhi. Also, we need to understand that apart from, there are three uh, subjects of the state list, police, land and law and order. These three ideas under Article 239AA are not under the Delhi government. They shall be controlled by the union government, despite them being a part of state list. On the rest of the subjects of the state list, the uh, government of NCR can legislate. Now, more on the news. The reference to a larger bench dates back to February 14, 2019, when a division bench of justices A.K. Sikri and Ashok Bhushan gave a split opinion on the question of control regarding services. Now, while one of them held that the Delhi government had no power over services, the other who uh, took the middle path, what did the first judge say? He held that entry 41 of the state list in the seventh schedule of the constitution dealing with state public services was outside the purview of the Delhi Legislative Assembly. So, one of the judges held that entry 41 of the state list which deals with state public services is not under the Delhi government. However, the other judge held that held that when it comes to officers in the rank of secretary, head of department, joint secretary, they could be directly submitted to the lieutenant governor which means that it is under the center. However, when it comes to Danix Kader, uh, when it comes to Danix Kader, the controlling power will be with the Delhi government. So, one of them held that completely the services are under the union. Okay, while the other held that uh, secretary, head of department and joint secretary would be under the lieutenant governor. While those officers of the Danix Kader would be under the government of Delhi. Now, uh, please do read the recent amendment. I'm sorry. Please do read about the recent uh, NCT Amendment Act. Which actually reduced the powers of the Delhi government and which increased the powers of the union government in Delhi. Now, fencidal smuggling is a challenge for BSF. Okay. Now, it's a very prelims oriented topic. You can also use one point in mains. Despite the drop in cattle smuggling and other narcotics, fencidal, a codeine based cough syrup remains a challenge for border guarding forces around India-Bangladesh border. India and Bangladesh have a very large border, about 4000 kilometers. It is the largest border that India shares with any of its neighboring countries. Largest, even larger than Myanmar or even larger than Pakistan. 
China. So India Bangladesh border is the largest border. Now, why does this smuggling happen? A cough syrup bottle costs about 200 rupees in India, but it fetches a lot more money in Bangladesh as, as cough syrup with codeine phosphate are an easy way for people to get high. Hence, it is in demand over there. It is not in demand over here in India because we have other means of getting high. However, in the case of Bangladesh, because alcohol is banned, uh, codeine phosphate, uh, fencidine, uh, cough syrup bottles are in huge demand. Now, fencidine is smuggled in low quantities from India to Bangladesh and it is smuggled in different different ways by different people. When it is smuggled in small quantities, it becomes very difficult to pinpoint and stop it from happening. Along with fencidine, other narcotic that is smuggled in huge quantities is the Yaba tablets. Now, this Yaba tablet is a mixture of methamphetamine and caffeine. It is sold as cheap red or pink pills and it works as a stimulant for the central nervous system. Okay, now these Yaba tablets are actually originating in Myanmar and they are transmitted to Bangladesh through India. The first thing that we need to know is that we have two drug, uh, drug producing areas. One is known as the Golden Triangle and the other one is known as the Golden Crescent, which border India. Okay, now Golden Crescent comprises of Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam. Okay, uh, Cambodia, Laos and Thailand I believe. While the Golden Crescent, it comprises of Pakistan, Afghanistan and Iran. So, uh, these places are known for drug production. And hence, India has to always constantly be aware because it lies on the crossroads of these two areas, of uh, these two regions which uh, produce drugs. Now, India to make digital maps of all villages. This is a recent uh, move and this is very important. India plans to prepare digital maps of all its 6 lakh villages and it also plans to develop Pan India 3D maps which will be developed for 100 cities for 6 lakh Indian villages and also along with that we have Pan India 3D maps for 100 cities. Currently we have an ongoing scheme piloted by the Panchayati Raj Ministry known as Swamitwa. Now, under this Swamitwa scheme, we use drones to uh, map out land parcels. Uh, drone technology is used to assess which particular land parcel belongs to who. This will actually increase digitization of land records and this will reduce conflicts among people. It will reduce litigation. It will help in uh, construction projects to move forward. Why? Otherwise, if at all, say for example, the government has to construct a road. If the government uh, does not know who the land parcel belongs to, how will they occupy or how will they take that land parcel? It has to wait for the entire litigation to complete. Hence, in order to avoid all of this, we are going for drone-based land parcel mapping. Now, recently, some of the guidelines were made in order to make this possible, in order to make this digital maps possible, some of them are to make it easier for surveys to be undertaken using drones. The guidelines help private companies prepare a variety of maps without needing approvals from all these different different ministries. So in order to develop these maps, digital maps, private companies have been spared of getting approvals from various ministries. Also, guidelines have been updated to use drones and develop applications. Uh, via location mapping. Okay, so drones can be used and applications can be developed via location mapping. For this, the guidelines have been made simpler. Earlier, there was a lot of complication regarding this. Okay. Some of the features of the Swamitva scheme are that Swamitva 
It helps in providing accurate service. Despite using drones, it provides extremely accurate services uh, because it uses the combination of survey grade drones and horse network, continuously operated reference stations. So these two concepts help in getting accurate results when it comes to land parcels. So now please know if at all there is a prelims question which says that survey grade drones and continuously operated reference stations are related to what? Know that it is related to the Savitva scheme. Also, this drone mapping is of high resolution nature. It is the 1 to 500 scale maps generated through the drone survey are of very high accuracy. Even entities which are 3 to 5 centimeters apart can be distinguished by using these drones. Geotagging is provided. Otherwise, if at all you use this line of sight and on field work, no, it will take a huge amount of expense uh, as compared to usage of drones. And digital records are again permanent. These are permanent and you can also use them uh, for proof. Digital, uh, these land records, these digital records, you know, you have, you can also use blockchain technology so that they, they cannot be ever fudged. Otherwise, say for example, you have land records. There is uh, this concept of duplicating of land, land records and also with time land records often tend to get lost or they get, they, they get torn or due to floods, they get uh, destroyed. So preventing all of this, digital records are permanent in nature. That is another benefit. And that's all for the day.